For this week's review, we'll examine this book. It is Crossway's English Standard Version Large Print Thin Line Reference Bible in top grain leather. The book is 9 and 5 eighths inches tall, 6 and a half inches wide, and 1 and a quarter inch thick. Here's the box. The title on it, picture of the Bible. Here is the ISBN 13 and the ISBN 10. And the back with information about it. It says that it's a readable 10.5 point type. We'll take a look at the size in more detail. The cross references are located at the bottom corner, the bottom right hand corner of each page. So you can stop that and read it if you'd like. For size comparison, I have here the uh, New King James Version Thin Line, which I have in a hardback. I got last summer to decide if I wanted to buy the goat skin, and I decided against the goat skin because the book does not have all the translation notes that are in the normal New King James Version. But you can see that it's roughly the same size, same layout. Another one that's comparable is uh, the Lockman Foundation's uh, New American Standard Bible. This is what they call their large print ultra thin. And it's a bit taller, I think, slightly. Slightly taller than the crossway. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch. And maybe a quarter of an inch wider. Perhaps as much as three-eighths of an inch wider. They're all, I think, aimed at the same market. Uh, thin lines sort of uh, lay out for people to carry with them easily to put in a purse or a backpack. We talked about the book dimensions. Let's look at the format. It is uh, two columns of text with no center column references. As we mentioned, the references are down in the corner. And there is also a uh, comment section at the bottom of the page for uh, translation notes. Each, uh, each column, say in a prose area over here, the column is 65 millimeters wide and it has about 47 characters per line. I have counted as many as 50 characters per line. In a page without breaks like these uh, headings and gaps here, you have 54 lines of text per page. The page dimensions are 233 millimeters, that's 9.17 inches tall, and 154 millimeters wide, 6.06 .06 inches wide. The uh, characters are printed in what appears to me to be a very dark gray. It's not black. It may be that, that I get that impression because it's not quite as bold as I would like to see. But they don't appear to be really black to me. The uh, margins at the top of the page, from the top of capitals to the edge, is about 13 millimeters. From the bottom down to the edge is about 8 millimeters. The inner margin can be as much as 11 millimeters, but it's not that much there. It's very, very small in the center of the book. And the outer dances around a bit. I measure between 7 and 10 millimeters. The uh, font here in the text is, as we saw, advertised to be 10.5 points. Uppercase characters are actually a bit smaller than a 10 point Times New Roman, but the lowercase characters are about 11.5 points times New Roman. So it's one of those curious Bible fonts where capital letters are kind of small in proportion to the lowercase letters, at least when you look at a Times New Roman's proportions. Line height is uh, 3.9 millimeters, and that equates to 11 points. And I think that matches for, with the impression that you get with your eyes looking at the text. The uh, font is actually fits in well with the line spacing. The line spacing looks somewhat generous. So it's certainly not a problem tracking your eye across the line of text. Verse numbers are here in the text. 
They are not in a different color or, or especially bold, but they are easy, not easy enough to find. Text is line matched, um, but the paper is somewhat um, transparent. So it's, uh, it's very important that they line matched it. We'll talk a little bit more about the opacity of the paper here in just a second. We mentioned the references are in the lower right hand corner. The font size there is about six points. Down below the translation notes at the page bottom, that font is about seven and a half points. The paper is um, 35.7 micrometers thick. I estimate the paper weight at 32.7 GSM, so it's probably around 32. The uh, paper has a matte surface. There isn't a lot of reflectivity off it. There's some, a little bit of a sheen, but not much. It's white. It may have a slight grayish tinge to it. It's not quite as white as some other papers. There is a significant show through. You can read through this paper. It's not hard to find places where you can see all the way through to other pages. Um, you can read quite easily. The Old Testament there, uh, here. You can see Genesis quite easily through the paper. So that does constitute something of a problem. It's really not as opaque as I would like. There's some print non-uniformity. It's not really dramatic, but it certainly is noticeable. So I will show you page 1120, which isn't printed very darkly, and 1152, which is printed a bit darker than that, side by side. That will give you a sense for it. Eleven fifty-two is back here in the book of Revelation. So if we look at them side by side, we should see that the page on the left is a little lighter than the page on the right. Not dramatically so, but noticeably so. There are no book introductions, no separate book introductions. The book titles, as you see here, are in the outside corners, along with information about the contents of the page. So on this page, the last verse that begins on the page is 4-3. On this page, the first full verse on this page is 2-2. Two, two. Um, page numbers are center top of the pages. Uh, headings are in the text in an italic font around the same size as the uh, the font in the, in the text itself. The chapter numbers are in a large bold number as so. Books of the Bible do all begin on a separate page. So here's the small book of Jude. It's on its own page. Second John is on its own page. Uh, third John is. Uh, all these small books all begin on their own pages. The words of Christ, I'm happy to report, are in black. I know some people like red, but I really prefer black. The red tends to hurt me. It uh, causes physical pain to my eyes when I try to read it. It causes a lot of eye strain. Uh, the English Standard Version is a translation that does not put the words that translators add in order to make the text more clear in italics. So you will not find italic words for trans italic font for translator supplied words in the English Standard Version. At the end of the Bible, after the book of Revelation, one finds a one page table of weights and measures and monetary units. So there is that. Then after that, there's a 60-page concordance in uh, three columns. So here's the little introduction to the concordance abbreviations used for the books of the Bible in the concordance. And then 60 pages, three columns. The um, words themselves are in all caps, and it's about a six and a half point font. The uh, 
contact lines here are actually in about a seven point font. Um, all of it's sans serif, and of course only the words themselves are in this bold, bold all caps. There is our maps, eight maps in all. The maps do not go in the gutter. They do have a bit of a gloss to them. I would call them semi-gloss. They're not especially shiny. They do not go into the gutter. Here you can see the stitching. It is a sewn binding. You can see the lines of stitching there. There is, after the maps, no map index, just some pieces of cardstock, three or four of them. And then you get to the back of the Bible. The book has uh, gilt, but not art gilt page edges. The ribbon markers, ribbon marker is a single ribbon marker. It is uh, brown. It's six millimeters wide and very long, or long enough, 326 millimeters long. The bands, head and tail bands, are dark brown alternating with a light brown. So they're attractive. The uh, cover is, uh, as we mentioned, uh, it's a top grain leather cover and it's very flexible. It is an edge line construction, so the liner here that's attached to the cover tabs in between these pages of cardstock here. And we mentioned that it's a sewn binding. It does lie open, but not quite flat. I'll show you that. So that's open here, the title page, open at Genesis, but it has this curve to it. So. If you want to read the left-hand page in Genesis, you can press it down, but you're going to get a curvature. So I would call that lying open, but not lying flat. And while we're here, let's just take a look at the workmanship on the cover. I'm not really into leather work and the looks of the corners and all, but you should notice this. It's sort of a ragged edge look to this portion of the cover that's turned over the top of the liner. And here's a look at the corner, up at right corner. There's that ragged edge. And so we're in the inside of the front of the Bible here. And here's the lower corner. We don't have as much of a ragged look here at the bottom of the page as we do at the side and at the top. But the reason it's so flexible, such a nice tactile experience, is because of that edge line construction. Okay, let's move into the Bible from this end. We have the, the page of cardstock that attaches to the liner, another page of cardstock. Then you have a presentation page, marriages, births and adoptions, and deaths. The first title page, through which you can easily read English Standard Version on the second title page, and you can see the ESV crest very easily through there. And the second title page, which we had a preview of just a second ago, and then and then the uh, copyright page. This is the ESV Text Edition 2016. Permission notices, copyright information, it's printed in China, and my copy is um, 2016, sixth printing. So next page is the table of contents, 49 Old Testament books of the Jewish and Protestant canons, the 27 books of the New Testament canon, uh, almost every bun's canon. And then the material at the back of the book that we took a look at a moment ago, the table of weights and measures, the concordance and the maps, books of the Bible in alphabetical order, which is helpful if you want to try to find one of the small minor prophets in particular. And 
and uh, the preface, which mentions very clearly that the starting point for the English Standard Version was the 1971 Revised Standard Version text. It talks about their essentially uh, literal transla translation philosophy, and it also mentions that it's based on the Masoretic Hebrew text found in the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia, 1997, and the Greek text in the 2014 editions of uh, UBS 5 and NA28, the United Bible Society's 5th edition, excuse me, the Nestle Land uh, 28th edition. Although they do sometimes uh, not follow those, the translators uh, retain the liberty to make their own textual choices, and some, so sometimes they do uh, stray from the printed editions. Explanation of features, several pages of that. They talk about the cross-references and the textual footnotes. And then one is at the Old Testament, and we've already shown the show through here. So I just wanted to show the font up close so we can see the characters themselves, uh, the tracking. It does get close in places, but it's generally not bad. These words here seem to be pressed together quite closely. But my, ulti my, overall, ex uh, it, my overall impression is that it's not very bad at all. I like the tracking. I like the line spacing as well. It's quite nice. Uh, it does not seem to be printed as darkly as it could be. And there is this uh, show-through issue, which is very clear, where you see poetry printed, where you can see the previous page, and in fact you can see the page behind the printing on the other side. Now here's, uh, for comparison, this is the New American Standard Large Print Ultra Thin. So it's on the right. It seems to be printed a bit more darkly. It also has um, an opacity problem, and it is not line matched. Um, it's not the more recent blue paper edition. It's an older, older one. I think my copy is from 2013. But I actually find this on the right a bit easier to read than the ESV on the left. Now, um, also here's the New King James large print thin line coming in on the right, roughly at the same place in the Bible, and its paper is more opaque, I think. It's also line matched like the ESV, and then it's printed in a smaller font. This is the Comfort Print edition, which is smaller, but it's darker. And I actually think it's a more pleasant reading experience than the ESV. Now I want to show you the, uh, the print on several different pages so you can get a sense for how prevalent this um, show-through issue is. So here we're looking in First Kings, and um, you can definitely see characters in between the characters on the previous page. This H here and then, it doesn't appear to be well formed, but it's only because there's darkness. There's cloudiness behind it. Um, the characters themselves, you can see how they're shaped, but there are distortions to them because of darkness on the other side. Definitely see printing from the other side of the page here. What I do in order to read a book like this is I slip a piece of black construction paper behind the page, and if you're like me, that makes a world of difference. It really helps quite a lot. Alright, that's one example. We'll flip forward. This uh, is in the book of Job. So here, because it's poetry, you can see all the, the printing around the words on the outside edges. Things from the back side. Things from the page uh, previous to the back of this page all visible here. Here we are in Proverbs, same kind of issue. 
see all the, the, the print from the opposite page coming through, darkening the lines, creating kind of a smudginess to them. Simply not very pleasant. You see a capital T from the page, one page back here. You can read the word Judah there. You can see chapter 25 up higher. It's off the, off the field of view. Here's the word do coming in here from the left. Go forward. Another example. This is John's Gospel, chapter 21. Same sort of thing going on. It creates a mental confusion. It causes eye strain for me. And I think the, the issue is twofold. Uh, print is not dark enough. Paper is not opaque enough. One last shot. Here we are in 1 John chapter 2. Look at all this coming through. The way this, this is kind of jumbled kind of confused with the noise coming through from the previous page. I'm not sure how visible this is on camera, but to my eyes it's, uh, it's simply very hard to read. So let's talk a bit about pros and cons. Uh, first, the English Standard Version is a very good translation. It's somewhat literal. Uh, they call it essentially literal, I believe is the terminology that they're using. Um, on my translation continuum chart, which you should be seeing now, it's somewhat less literal than the New American Standard Bible, but more than the New Revised Standard Version or the uh, Christian Standard Bible. The um, cover is very nice. I like top green leather. Top green leather, of course, is a better leather than uh, genuine leather. Genuine leather really isn't all that genuine. My copy, you can see here, a scar. This is uh, the actual hide of the animal. This is the outer tough portion of the leather. So it's much better than the genuine leather and much, much better than a bonded leather. The construction's quite nice and because it creates this flexible cover and it does lie almost flat. So all of that I like. And, and, and uh, even though it does have this raggedness to it, it doesn't affect the functionality of the book at all to me. Um, I don't mind that one bit. What what I do have trouble with with this book is um, the opacity of the paper and the darkness of the print. I think if the print were just a bit darker or bolder and the paper were thicker. I know people like thin line Bibles. Um, they like to be able to carry them around and have them portable. But if this book were half an inch thicker I don't think it would be so much harder to store and it wouldn't be that much tougher to carry around with you and certainly the paper would be much much more opaque than it is here where you can read chapter 42 through the page. Uh, if that doesn't bother you that's not an issue but it does bother me. So um, all in all, um, I really cannot recommend this particular edition. I understand that the Omega, which is essentially the same layout, has a better print, but I've never seen one in, future, in, in person, so I can't uh, guarantee that that's true. Well, I'm sorry to have a somewhat negative uh, video review. I know people will criticize uh, my criticism of Bibles, but the reason I do it is uh, to give you information about these books so that you don't waste your money. I mean, you might disagree with me, and you might like the way this looks, and you might like red letters, and you might like glossy paper. I actually saw someone do a review of a Bible where he was boasting about how shiny the paper was, and I just scratched my head. But we're all physiologically different. We like different things. I want to tell you as much as, as I can about the book so you can make an informed decision about whether it's what you want or not. Um, also, I'd like to provide feedback to the publishers so that they can improve these books. I think they've generally, uh, publishers have done a remarkable job improving the quality. Uh, just think about how much better the Nelsons are these days than they were just a few years ago. 
Well, uh, thanks very much for watching. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, if you like this review or any of my other reviews and feel so inclined, I encourage you to subscribe and to hit the like button. Thank you very much again for watching.